Okay, so let's start with ASCOM. So this is the document uh, of ASCOM that is submitted to NIST. So uh, it is version 1.2 because initial version of ASCOM was somewhat different, but this is currently the final version. But of course, if they move to the next phase of the competition, they may still modify it and we may see a version 1.3 in the future. So the document contains uh, almost everything about ASCON, the specification, security claims, features, design rationale, and security analysis and implementation. So we are mostly interested in this part where we will be, since we are going to implement ASCON in C programming, we need to know the specifications of it. So let's look at the document and see what we are going to implement. So if you pass the first part, in the specification parts, the first table is somewhat important. This is, explains the uh, parameters of this algorithm. So actually this document provides us two different versions of ASCOM. The main version, ASCOM 128, is the actually the uh, main algorithm, but they provide an alternative version. They call it ASCOM 128A. So let's look first, let's look at the initial one. So the main algorithm uh, has a key size of 128 bits. Nonce is also 128 bits. Tag, which is produced as a, at the end as a message authentication code is 128 bits. And data blocks is 64 bits. As you can see, this is the only difference here between the second version. And initial, uh, in the initial version, number of runs are 12 and six. So if you, instead of, use the, instead of using the main version, if you move to the second one, as you can see, data block is uh, twice. So this means that your throughput is actually twice because you can encrypt uh, two times more data in a single pass. For this reason, the number of runs are increased from six to eight. So we will look at the picture of Aspen in a minute and this number will make sense. So, uh, the competition has an optional call for hash functions. So in this document, they also provide the hash function based on the ASCOM algorithm. But uh, in our implementation, we will not be focusing on that. So here are some no notations, but most of them are clear for us. So I'm moving on to the picture. So actually this picture almost has everything and we need to understand this to implement the uh, algorithm. So as you can see, it starts with an initialization. As the initialization, the algorithm takes uh, three variables, IV, key, and nonce. So they are concatenated to each other. So remember that uh, key is 128 bits, nonce is 128 bits, and the internal state of ASCON is 320 bits, so only 64 bits remain for the IV. So IV is fixed and key and nonce changes from depending on your uh, encryption. So this 320 bits are put inside, uh, uh, I mean stored as an uh, internal state and the permutation applied eight times to this 320 bits. At the end, there's a simple XOR with the key and then uh, initialization ends. So the 320 bits are modified due to this permutation and now the encryption can start. If you have associated data, which is the data that is not going to be encrypted, these AIs are the data blocks, associated data blocks that are going, that, that will be transmitted but are not going to be encrypted. So they are included here so that they will, uh, they will have effect on the final tag that is going to be produced here. So you are, uh, this data is also authenticated. But in general use case, we, most of the time we won't ha be having associated data. So I'm just, I'm not going to implement this part. So I'm assuming that this uh, part of picture does not exist. So we will move on to the plain text processing part. So we will um, uh, omit associated data part. So we have this part, assume that we have implemented this part. Now you have plain text blocks, P1, P2, etc. So 
uh, you exhort them to the top part of your internal state and produce the uh, output as a cipher textbook. So uh, this R is rate. Uh, recall that main OS conversion, which we are going to implement, has rate 64 bits, which is the data block size. So 64 bit of plain text is exhort here and cipher textbook produced here, which is just eight bytes. Then you perform the permutation this time b many times and exhort with the second plain text block and so on and so forth until you uh, finish processing all of the plain text blocks and process uh, provide the cipher text block. So this is the encryption part. After you've done this, there's an, uh, again an, a key exhort here and then you perform permutation again, exhort with the key again, and produce the bottom 128 bits as your tag. So in a single pass of data here, you produce the ciphertext and the tag. So they called it authenticated encryption was this. You provide both encryption and authentication here. So the decryption picture is almost the same. You start the same process here. Only difference is that uh, since you don't have the plain text block but the cipher text block, you exhort it with your internal state, top part of your internal state, and provide the plain text, and also write the cipher text block to the internal state and process it, and so on and so forth. And at the end, you will produce the tag. If this tag matches with the one that is sent to you, then authentication is done. So this is the picture of ASCON. So as you can see, in the, for the implementation, all we need to implement is actually this P permutation because everything is done here. The rest is just simple. You can uh, perform these operations in a for loop or something, okay? So uh, we should look at P, the permutation P, and then start implementing it. At the initialization, uh, we are giving this this IV, so this will be this IV is fixed, and in the document it is given like this. So we will just take it from here. Here is the algorithmic version pseudocode for ASCOM. I'm moving on. We are not going to implement the hashing. So this is the permutation P that we are going to implement. So it consists of three parts. First, constant addition, then substitution, then linear layer. So constant addition is like this. The constant bits are going to be exhorted to these uh, six or seven bits. Eight bits, so these are, uh, the constants are eight bits and they're going to be exhorted to the rightmost eight bits to third row, x2, okay? Then you perform uh, SBox operation. Since uh, there are five bits uh, the, in, in a column, you will take this five bits, perform SBox operation and write the result here. So there are 64 columns. This means that you have to perform 64 SBox operation in a single pass. Then there's this diffusion layer. Uh, where you, so the substitution layer provides operation on the columns. Now you perform operation on the uh, row so that you can provide diffusion. So this uh, diffusion function, uh, sigma i's are just XOR of the row with itself after a rotation. So these are the simple three operations that we are going to implement. Let's look at the details. The constant addition part is like this, so constants are provided like here. So there are eight bit values and you are going to implement, uh, add them uh, depending on uh, P, how many times you are going to perform the permutation. So if you are going to perform the permutation 12 times, the first constant is, that is going to be added is here, the second one is here and so on. But if you are going to use P6, which, which is going to be done in the encryption part. The first constant is here, second, third, and so on in this way. So this table tells you what the constants are. In the substitution layer, we have this five by five S box. 
So you can keep it in a table and just by looking at it, you can perform the Sbox operation, but this would be costly. So we will do a trick here, which will be the bit slice implementation. And this is actually what is suggested by the designers, because instead of performing a table lookup operation, they say that their Sbox design is actually given in this figure. So given the five bits input of the Sbox, the results thing five bits are actually uh, some logical operations between this uh, input bits. This is actually the case for every S box, but here they chose this S box in a special way because the number of operations in this picture uh, is really small. So uh, at the end of the document, they give us these operations. So we will just copy it from there. So instead of uh, storing the S box in a table, we will perform these operations. This is important because if you perform table lookup operation uh, in a small device, this will consume more energy. And by looking at, uh, if you perform a side channel attack, which focuses on power analysis, you can see when the SPAX operation is performed and so, and from those differences of power consumption, you can recover some bits of the key. So for this reason, uh, the designers are reduced the SBOX operation into basic logical operations like XOR, and and that or not operation and so on. So this is the SBOX operation. This is the linear diffusion layer. So the sigma i's are given like this. So first row is XOR to itself, but rotated 19 times to the right. And also uh, the same row rotated to 28 bits to the right are exhort. So you have exhort three values here and write the result here. Okay, so first row changes like this, the second row like this, third, fourth, and fifth like this. So it is very simple operation. Okay, so I think this covers it all. So just by this knowledge, we should be able to implement this cipher. Of course, uh, implementing cryptographic algorithms is not that easy so we i may do some errors but let's see if i can do it okay so keep this picture in mind so let's focus on this permutation and try to implement it okay so i'm stopping the share and moving on to the visual studio screen so i'm assuming you can see it so C programming language starts with the main inclusion of the uh, input output library, STDO hash. So in order to check, you can implement this and check if you see the hello world. Actually it printed it, but probably you're not seeing it because Zoom only shares the Visual Studio screen, okay? So this main function uh, is run when a, a C programming code is called. So I will start with uh, writing the permutation actually, but uh, let's start with this. Uh, let me first define a type definition. So this means that uh, I'm going to use 64 bit values. Uh, for instance, the state of uh, ASCON has five rows of uh, 60, 64 bits. So I'm here. I'm uh, designing a, a 64 bit uh, variable. Uh, I don't know why it gives an error like this. Maybe I should just do this, you know, to find. So I think this would do the trick. So generally when you needed to uh, create a 64 bit integer, uh, most of the time, uh, you need to do it like unsigned long, long, but 
in Visual Studio, the 64-bit integer is defined like this. So this is the only difference uh, you need to do if you're going to use a different compiler to implement this code, okay? So I replace this with long, long int and everything would work the same. So I'm going to keep the internal state in this uh, five variables. Okay, thank you for the explanation. So I think I will return to it. So I will do it like this, type def. Uh, so this was what was missing. Thank you for the correction. I was, I confused type def with de define. So now it works. Okay, this is better this way. So I choose to do it like this. I actually, writing is U64 is kind of better, but in order to avoid uh, errors from compilers to compilers, I give a new name. So bit 64 is just 64 bits uh, value. Okay, so now I can uh, store the state in five values, so I will perform operations on this one. So let's start with implementing the P permutation. Okay, let's say that this is P. So recall that the permutation takes uh, the state, so I will take it as like this, as the input. And actually, we are going to perform this uh, sometimes 12, sometimes six, sometimes eight times. So I will just take the input A, which will tell me how many times this permutation is going to be done. So let's write in a for loop. So, when we perform the permutation, what we are going to do is the following three things, adding the constant, performing S-box operation, and then performing the linear operation, right? So let's write as if uh, these operations, these functions are already defined. So at constant, we are going to uh, send the state there, and this val values, then I will ask for S box operation and then linear thing. Okay. So what I've done is as follows. In the round constant addition, remember that the constants depend on the number of runs you are performing. This is the total number of runs that you are going to perform the P and the current number of runs, I. So I am passing this information as input, the at constant. I'm only sending the state to the S box because this state will change depending on the S box. And then I will do the linear operation. So this kind of implementation is actually referred to as declarative uh, implementation uh, because at this point, actually, I already implemented everything because this is how it is going to work. But of course, we haven't implemented the functions itself. So let's start with the I will start with the linear because it is really easy. So let's say that this is our linear uh, function. So I think it will be taking this as the input, right? So uh, recall that this uh, operation on the XOR of the rows with itself. So uh, I will create two temporary values like temp zero and temp one. So since we are going to perform rotation operation, maybe instead of writing everything uh, again and again, we can define a function like rotate. Actually, we can use also the uh, define variable here, but let's just do it like this which will be easy writing. So this is right load state of X value L bits to the right. So I will define this function like this. So let's say that this is temp value. So 
So temp will be the x rotated to shifted to right L bits, XOR to itself, but this time x is shifted to I think the parentheses are correct. So I will return this value. So this comes from the uh, idea uh, that uh, the there is no CPU instruction for rotate. Okay, we have instruction for shift. So X right shift L means that you are shifting L bits it to the right, but uh, if you are shifting it two bits, then you are actually destroying the right two, rightmost two bits. And now, since you are shifting it, your leftmost two bits becomes zero. For this reason, you have to uh, left shift it 64 minus L bit times to the left and XOR it with this. So this will provide you the rotate operation. So now we can actually define this operation as follows times zero is actually rotation first row 19 bits to the right, sorry. So in the document, remember that uh, this is how it is defined. So for the temp one, I will rotate it 28 bits to the right. And now I can write it as follows, state zero is actually itself XOR to temp zero, XOR to temp one. So of course, uh, I'm writing it as a reference code. This is why I'm uh, writing more lines. You can actually write, could write it in a single round if we needed we didn't need to write, keep them in a temporary value, but anyway, this is how I do it. So uh, this, core, this lecture is not about optimization, but this is somewhat important for future reference. So if you write some a code like this, if your compiler doesn't do it, then uh, what they will spend one more memory space uh, for the state zero here. So instead of writing it like this, you can put an XOR operation here and remove this value from here. So this would be faster most of the time. Okay, so this is for the first row. So I will just copy this code. And now I will write state one. So now I'm sorry, doing it for the uh, second row, but when we go back to the document, we will see that these rotation numbers are changed. This is 61 bit to the right, and this is 39. Okay. So if you do it for uh, all of the five rows, uh, okay. Let me do it quickly. I'm looking it from the document and it says one and six. And for this row it is 10 and 17. And for this they are seven and 41. Okay, so that's it. We done it. The linear layer, the diffusion layer is as simple as that. So all of the rows are XOR to itself, but rotated first. Okay. So now we are done actually for the linear part. So this is done. We, what we need to do is add constant and SBOX operations. So for this reason, uh, Let's do SBOX first, which is more important. And actually, we will be cheating here. 
and take the sound values from the document itself. Okay, state five. Okay. Okay, so uh, we are going to do a, a bit slice implementation here. I will show it to you from the document and tell you why this is necessary. So let's go back to the document and let's remember what the SBox operation was. Okay, we call that the SBox operation was like this. So five bits input are replaced with five bit outputs, but now we are storing these columns actually a, in a single bit of every row. So we have to take all of those five bits from there, put inside an array and get the value from there and put it back, which would be a lot of operations just for a single SBox operation. And uh, we have to repeat it 64 times. So this would uh, be performing really bad in a software. So this is the number of operations we need to do is a lot. So instead of doing it, as I told you, I will do this. So just from this picture, actually, you can see what it is. For instance, initially you need to XOR X0 with X4 and so on and so forth. But luckily, uh, at the end of this document, they actually provide us these instructions here. Figure five, pipelineable instructions for bit slice implementations of five bits uh, SBox SX. So they say that those operations are actually this. So these uh, operations are enough to perform the SBox operation. So if we copy them from here, so that figure was exactly this. Okay. So let's go back to our code. So let me share it. Okay. So this is actually what we need to do. Okay. But of course, uh, we store, okay, if I change the X, uh, I need to change these values to array values. So maybe I can do it by replace. Okay. Yes. Okay, I think I have done it all. So, uh, now we have done this, but of course T is not defined, so I will just define it here, T5. So the compiler should now be happy, and this is it. So a good thing is that uh, maybe I need to initialize it to zero to two. Okay. So uh, as you can see, instead of a one table lookup, now we replace it with a lot of operations, maybe 20 or 30, I don't know. But good thing is that uh, I'm keeping every row in a single value like X zero. So when I XOR X0 with X4, I'm actually applying this operation to 64 values. So this single pass will perform the SBox operation to 64 different columns. So this is a huge speed up. This is why we call it actually bit slice implementation. We are working on the bits, but since we are keeping the whole state in a 64 bit value, we are actually performing 64 parallel SBox operations just by doing this uh, instructions. And again, this would be good in uh, for lightweight cryptography because this would provide resistance about uh, for side channel attacks that's focused on power analysis. Okay, 
So again, uh, we've done it. So now the SBox function is also valid. So we can do it like this. And maybe I should make it smaller like this. So what we need to add constant part. So we have to do the actually take the constants from uh, the documents. So I think there are 12 constants, if I'm not mistaken. So they are like defined like this, okay? So they are actually reducing one from here and add to here. So the next one is this. Then it is this, right? Uh, zero F, since these are uh, eight bit values, I think I from I started from 16 here, sorry, 15 here, I moved to zero. So this means that there are 16 values. So I should make the array size to 16. And now we have the constants. Okay. Now all we need to do is the write this uh, at constant layer. So let's say that it is something like this. So these are the inputs. Uh, int i and int a, right? So recall that the constants are added to the third row. Since we are counting from, start counting from zero, this means that the state two should be state two exhort to the constant. But uh, recall that which constant you are adding actually depends on the uh, number of runs and other stuff. So if you look at the documents, I think you can see that if I write it like this, then it works. Because recall that if it is uh, 12 rounds of encryption, uh, then A is 12. So 12 cancel each other and initial round starts from zero. So you use this one. But if A is different, this is modified. So you start from the following bonds and so on. But I think this is it too. So we done it, right? So yes, okay. So this is the P. Now uh, we have the basic uh, primitives here. Now let's write, for instance, uh, initialization part. So this requires actually uh, the state, of course. So, and you need a secret key to run this algorithm, which is, let's say, key. And so. Okay, 
So let's do this. Let's say this is your nonce. This is your secret key. But of course we need to take the IV from the documents. So let me find it in the file. Okay. Okay. I'm copying it from the documents. So the IV is given like this. For the main version, it is this. Okay, so initially your state is this, state zero is IV. State one is key zero, first 64 bits of the key. Your next row is this. And what you do is Okay. Final two rows are actually nose. So this is how we initialize the internal state. So this is your initial state. Then you run the initialization. And set the states and key. I'm sending the key, because I will explain it later, because for instance, we said that initialization is just running P uh, two other times, right? So, so this is initialization. But uh, if you go back to the picture, you will realize that at the end of this uh, key is XOR to the final two rows like this. This is why I pass the key variable also to this function. Okay, so this is your initialization. And now the state is ready to perform encryption. Okay. So after this, uh, what happens next is the uh, encryption. If you uh, want to see how it is, but maybe I should also write this uh, function that I would prefer to call uh, print state. So, okay. So normally, this is what you should write to see an 64 bit hexadecimal value in a Visual Studio uh, environment. Uh, it is printed on the screen like this, I64. And this is state I. And uh, when you print hexadecimal values, if there are uh, zeros at the beginning, they are omitted when it is printed on the screen. So in order to keep the size the same, I generated 016 so that uh, you also print the zeros on the screen. Okay. So assume that we perform the initialization, then print uh, everything on the screen. Okay, so this should be uh, printing the result on the screen. Okay, I run it and it works, so, but probably you couldn't see. So let me share my... Uh, command prompt 
I think you can see this. So when I run it, this is the result. So your internal state, which I fed it with IV and I gave the key and nonce at all zeros. And after the uh, permutation operation, this is what you see at the end on the screen, okay? But of course, this is just the beginning part. So we haven't done any encryption. What we did was to uh, only the initialization part. But I assume that we have a plain text block and we want to encrypt it. So let's say that this is my plain text. And it's something like this. Okay, a 64 bit plain text. And I assume that I want to encrypt this. Okay, so I need to write an a uh, plain text processing part, but let's say that it is encrypt. Okay, so it need to take the states as the input. Okay. So it should be, but of course assume that you are uh, encrypting more than one block. So let's say that we give it as an input here. Then we take the plain text. We don't know how many blocks you are going to encrypt. And let's say that we provide the cipher text to this. Okay. Okay, so from the picture you could easily see that cipher text zero is actually a plain text. Your initial block XOR to the top row of the states, right? So this is it. So if you have only a single plain text block, then this is what you get. But of course you can, uh, you may need to encrypt more than one round or one block. Sorry, this is why I have this length parameter. So assume that length is the number of blocks you are going to uh, encrypt. So let's start it from one. And let's say that I is less than length. Pi increases. And what we do is as follows. We call that now we call the, sorry, permutation layer with the state, but this time six rounds, right? So at the end, cipher text I becomes plain text I exhort with state zero. But also note that the state zero is updated and becomes plain text i xor state zero. Actually, I could simply write cipher text i, but yeah, there's no need to do it, right? Actually, a compiler will do that, but anyway, it is better for visualization, right? It is something like this. There's no need to perform the same operation again, sorry. Okay, this is the encryption. So if you feed it with uh, plain text like this and assume that we have uh, cipher text, let's say 10, Okay, so let's say we have more plain text like this. Okay, so if you encrypt, let me shorten it like this. 
if you encrypt the state after this. Length is two because I'm encrypting two blocks. I'm sending plain text and uh, the result will be written to cipher text. So let's say print state as cipher text zero. But actually cipher text is zero is not the state, sorry. So printf. Uh, It's so yes, I ran it and it worked. I'm of course I may have done some implementation errors, but I'm assuming that uh, I haven't because otherwise you would uh, tell me where I'm doing it wrong. Okay, so this is it. Now we have the initialization, we have the plain text uh, processing. But since we have come this far, maybe you might do. Uh, uh, finish this implementation and let's uh, do the uh, tech producing part. So in the figure it is called finalization. So let's say that it is what finaliz finalization. Again it will take the state and I think there will be some key XOR, so let's put the key at the input too. Okay. So I'm looking at the picture and it says that first start with key XOR, so state zero is XOR to itself with key zero. and state one is XOR with key one. So in the picture, it says that run the permutation 12 times. Then uh, last two blocks is your tag. So state three and state four is the tag. So if you do it like this, let's say that we run the finalization state and key then your okay let me do it like this this is cipher text and this is tag I think we can put this part. Produce state three and state four. Okay, so I think it works. So let me share you with my command prompt. Now, when I run the code, it says this. So after the initialization, this is the state. The cipher text is this, and tag is this. Okay. So that's it, actually. Okay.